Hello and welcome to another episode of Virtual Legality. I'm your host, Richard Hogue, managing member of the Hogue Law Business Law Firm of Northville, Michigan. And today we're continuing in our series on the biggest news in video gaming, California's lawsuit against Activision Blizzard for discrimination and harassment with a video today about strategy primarily and why we might see this all settle before there's any significant discovery. As you can see on your screen, we've put together a playlist called California versus Activision Blizzard, a legal view. This will go in there. This will be the fifth video in this playlist. I suspect there will be a few more, certainly as Activision responds legally to the claims made against it. Before we get started with today's video, I do want to give the disclaimer that I have given in almost all the other videos. I believe I forgot it in one that I do have family that works at Activision Blizzard. And so you can adjudge for yourself whether or not I'm presenting an unbiased view of the stories at issue. I always want to get those disclaimers out there because you should have that information. You should be able to assess that. Now, I have had people in my comments actually come to me and suggest that I am being uh, too mean to Activision Blizzard because I have family working there. I didn't expect it to go that direction, uh, but certainly that is up for you to decide, and that's why I put that information out there. With that being said... The last 24 hours or so have been a big one in this particular story. We saw the ActiBlizz walkout actually happen yesterday. It's reported on here. I've got an article from Game Daily Biz. You can check out. But in addition to that, there were some pretty big stories that are reflective of the risks that Activision Blizzard faces by pursuing this course of action. We saw in the lawsuit that the state of California has made certain allegations against it. And in analyzing the lawsuit... One of the things that I had said was that the various pieces of the lawsuit complaint are going to have a difficult time arriving at the level of proving that Activision Blizzard is willfully and maliciously discriminating against or facilitating the harassment of women. And people come in and ask me the question, well, okay, willful intention, that's very hard to prove. Absolutely. You could find a smoking gun email that says, let's do this, but it's unlikely But if there is a raft of complaints and they don't do anything about it, could that not be an indication of some kind of intentionality? And I said, yes, that is in fact the case. And that's one of the reasons why it's important that you're seeing these stories coming out, that you're seeing this conversation take place on social media, and that you're seeing some of these journalistic outlets start to dig into things. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So if we go to paragraph 47 of the original complaint. This was a paragraph I actually skipped a little bit in my original analysis because I still think that strategically the state of California shouldn't be naming individuals that aren't defendants to the case because defendants get certain rights to certain information and certain rights against the prosecution against them. Here, this individual that we're going to be talking about is named here, yes, and we talked about this yesterday, that as named in the lawsuit, It's probably wrong to report it as named in the lawsuit because that tends to imply that they're actually being sued, but they are a name that appears here. And this is very, very important to the story we're going to be talking about. So we're going to go over this paragraph. In a blatant example of defendants, that's Activision Blizzard's, refusal to deal with the harasser because of his seniority or position, Alex Afrasarabi, the former senior creative director of World of Warcraft at Blizzard Entertainment, was permitted to engage in blatant sexual harassment with little to no repercussions. During a company event, an annual convention called BlizzCon, Afra Sarabi would hit on female employees, telling him he wanted to marry them, attempting to kiss them, and putting his arms around them. This was in plain view of other male employees, including supervisors, who had to intervene and pull him off female employees. Afra Siabi was so known to engage in harassment of females that his suite was nicknamed the Crosby Suite after alleged rapist Bill Crosby. Now, we know that to be Cosby. Again, lawyers, including lawyers that work for the state of California, human beings too, these typos happen. Afra Siabi was also call females derogatory names at company events. Afra Siabi's conduct was known to Blizzard Entertainment's executives who took no effective remedial measures. J. Allen Brack, president of Blizzard Entertainment, allegedly had multiple conversations with Afra Siabi about his drinking and that he had been, quote unquote, too friendly towards female employees at company events, but gave Afra Siabi a slap on the wrist, i.e. verbal counseling, in response to these incidents. Subsequently, 
Afrasiabi continued to make unwanted advances towards female employees, including grabbing a female employee's hand and inviting her to his hotel room and groping another woman. And that's a very bad paragraph. It looks very bad. It's designed to by the state of California. And of course, the facts on the ground are very bad. So it's easy to make the company and this individual look very bad. But there are a couple of things happening here. One of which is we don't know when this happened. We don't know what happened to Afra Siabi. We, we know actually in reality that he was fired quietly by Activision Blizzard last year in 2020. And this is like the rest of the complaint, a, a data point that suggests that you have a bad actor. Potentially, you have an institutional bad action with J. Allen Brack. They are claiming the state is not doing enough to prevent what he knew was happening. And in so doing, you create this situation. That being said, you also have potential evidence of this kind of thing that's going to be looked for by journalistic outlets. And that's what happened yesterday in a manner that looks very, very bad for Activision Blizzard, just on a kind of headline and imagery basis. And that was done by Kotaku, where they put a report out that says, inside Blizzard developers' infamous Bill Cosby suite, with a picture, a portion of which is on the thumbnail, showing Blizzard individuals holding a portrait of Bill Cosby. Now, there's a couple of things happening here. We're going to look at this article. But one of the things that's happening here that's the most important from a strategic perspective is that this looks freaking terrible for Activision Blizzard with what we know about Bill Cosby now. And in fact, I tweeted out as soon as I saw this article and had read through it, yeah, there's no way in hell Activision wants discovery, wants the state of California to be able to go through the power of the court system and demand things of their internal emails on compensation, on Cosby suites, on anything else that like so many companies, they are very, very strongly incentivized to settle and to figure out how to stop this process. Now, especially when Kotaku did this in only a few days and found some pretty damning stuff. There is, however, another aspect to this that we will go over as well. While many claim they weren't aware of the problematic frat boy culture leading to accusations of sexual harassment and assault at the hands of male Blizzard employees, comments and images shared on social media paint a different picture. So we're going to give full faith and credit to the way Kotaku is reporting on this, and we're not going to discount anybody's experiences with this, certainly, but we are going to talk about how there are ways to interpret what this is and how this has happened that Kotaku is inclined to give the benefit of the doubt to Activision Blizzard, that most people aren't going to be inclined to give the benefit of the doubt to Activision Blizzard, but that there could be a conceivable way to interpret these events and pictures and circumstances that aren't as damning as the state of California suggests, or as even I would suggest it looks like from this picture and this headline. And that's fundamentally the major problem that Activision Blizzard has. Regardless of how you feel about all this, it looks god-awful, and there's going to be more stuff out there that's going to look god-awful, and that's how you arrive at the situation that you arrive in if you are Activision Blizzard. And they talk a little bit about Afra Siabi. They talk about the fact that J. Allen Brack is referenced here. They also use the term outright named in the lawsuit. Again, yes, the names are used, not a defendant. Got to be careful with that if you are reporting on it. Here's Kotaku now talking about the photos and the Facebook group that they found. The Cosby suite was more than just a nickname or a joke. In fact, if you were inclined to be generous to Activision Blizzard from just this complaint, you could assume this was a hush-hush name for a specific location and that Afra Siabi, as named here, as alleged by the state of California, is a single bad actor who had this hush-hush suite name, etc., The photo there, everybody holding the photo, indicates that that's not the case. That's one of the reasons it looks so terrible. Based on images and comments, Afra Siabi posted on his Facebook supplied to Kotaku by a former developer at Blizzard. It was reportedly a booze-filled meeting place where many, including Afra Siabi, would pose with an actual portrait of Bill Cosby while smiling. It was also a hotspot for informal networking at BlizzCon, three sources told Kotaku, where people looking to make inroads at the company would go to meet and hang out with some of its top designers, which is arguably as big of a complaint as what California alleges and what some other folks have said, which is one of the big problems you can have in a discrimination complaint, in a harassment complaint, this kind of thing, a hostile work environment complaint, is a suggestion that you are doing work, you're getting actual productive work done in an environment that is hostile or at bare minimum 
uncomfortable to one or more groups, in this case, women. So if you've got a Cosby suite, if you've got a liquor-fueled party where you are actually deciding on the next design piece for the next patch for World of Warcraft, you've created a problem. Because it's one thing to go off work and drink with your buddies, even if those buddies work with you. It's another thing to go and get work done in an environment that is potentially uncomfortable or otherwise isolating to members of your staff. Another image from the same Facebook item, we see this one talking about liquor being here. It shows a screenshot of a 2013 group chat called the BlizzCon Cosby Crew. In it, former Blizzard designer David Kosick writes, and these are all allegations because like anything else, you've got a certain amount of anonymity, but there's no reason to disbelieve Kotaku on this. I am gathering the hot chicks for the cause. Brigham replies, Afra Siabi, you can't marry all of them, Alex, Kosick writes. I can, I'm Middle Eastern, responds Afra Siabi. Jesse McCree, currently a lead game designer at Blizzard, then writes, you misspelled a euphemism for sleep with. And you see that kind of sexuality in this exchange. Again, you've got what amounts to something looking really bad. Technically speaking, guys being sexual and having sexual jokes in a Facebook group isn't in and of itself harassment, depends on targets, depends on circumstances, depends on facts, but it looks terrible again. You also see introduced here one of the major problems here, both with what the state of California did and with kind of Kotaku's assertions of the facts behind all this. You see this reference to the year 2013, and you see in the album that this particular event was, in fact, in 2013. 13. California doesn't reference the date here. In a blatant example, they use this Cosby sweet concept, even though they misspell Bill Cosby, to establish what the reader is going to think, which is, oh my God, these guys are celebrating at that point in time a convicted rapist, and that's unacceptable. That's indicative of their state of mind. However, not only is it eight years ago, and Activision Blizzard might have responded to it, as indeed they did before this lawsuit, but probably not on a time frame that you or I would have liked to have seen with respect to this kind of behavior, but also using what we know about Bill Cosby now and applying it in the past when a reader of this document can't tell that that's what's happening. You don't get that 2013 date, and so you don't know that this could, and we'll talk about this, plausibly be separated from what we now know about Cosby's behavior and his convictions, and certainly it being overturned is a different kind of story. And that is doing a little bit of rhetorical base stealing that is arguably unfair, but certainly understandable for anybody reading these stories and reading these quotes. Here's where Kotaku tries to address that issue. By 2013, there were already multiple allegations of sexual assault against Cosby, even if a conviction, which was later turned overturned on a technicality, wouldn't come until 2018. Now, we're not going to relitigate everything that happened with Bill Cosby. There is certainly a very, very wise understanding of the fact that you would hope that the facts presented wouldn't need to be overturned. That being said, what actually happened in that case, which was a prosecutor inducing someone to testify against their own uh, well-being against the Fifth Amendment is not actually a technicality. That was overturned specifically because the government induced certain things that the courts rightly held was an unacceptable use of government power and deception. That's not great. We don't want that to happen. But the blame for that is truthfully on the initial prosecution and the decisions that they made. It's not a technicality. It's not something somebody failing to file paperwork or signing the wrong document. That's kind of a legal aside. Maybe we'll do a a video on it at some point. Uh, But regardless, the conviction was overturned on something other than the merits of the facts at hand, which I think is what Kotaku is getting that there. Now, they link to a story that is trying to suggest that by 2013, everybody and their brother knew that Bill Cosby was bad news. And if you look at the article, you see that there were allegations. You see that there were allegations primarily in 2004, 5, and six, you get things like the prosecutor in the specific case saying, I'm not, I don't have enough to get out past reasonable doubt. You have it going away after a civil lawsuit is settled in November of 2006. And then you have this giant gap in 2014, where apparently comedian Hannibal Burris started making jokes about Bill Cosby uh, being a bad guy. And that revived everything and got more complaints 
made against him. You see this kind of same thing referenced in the Wikipedia article. You see references to complaints in 1996 and 2005, but with a resurfacing in 2014. And in fact, the resurfacing apparently is based around the joke being that he has a Teflon image despite some of this. And that I can only speak for myself, but before the mid 2010s, I didn't know much of this. And if you don't think about that in context of everything else, you've also got evidence in NBC News and others suggesting that the community, the society's knowledge of all this was not really in existence before 2014. You've got a news article here that talks about why are these coming up again? And you see reference made here in November of 2014, a year after the BlizzCon conference of things like the fact that Bill Cosby has a Thanksgiving Day Netflix special coming up in 2014, which I don't believe ever happened, and a Cosby new NBC comedy, which as of November of 2014 is slated to premiere in the summer or fall of 2015, and an NBC spokesman says is still in development. As of November 2014, when all of this breaks back up, NBC, Netflix, others are not viewing Bill Cosby or references to Bill Cosby as a kind of cancer. So if you want to believe the actual individuals here, you could say the Cosby allegations, Cosby's status wasn't known in November of 2013. It's up to you. And I don't mind either either way determining what you feel about that. But there are plausible reasons to believe that a picture like this one is not a group hugging a picture of a rapist, but in fact, hugging what they view as a kitschy picture of a 1980s icon. And we'll see some of the things that they say about that. Either way, in 2021, it looks terrible at bare minimum because of what we know now. Now, Kotaku tries to hit on this a little bit further. It says, according to one source with knowledge of the hotel room, the Cosby suite name was a play on the comedian's iconic ugly sweaters and didn't have any sexual connotation, at least not when the joke began. Instead, they suggest the running joke was that the rooms in question looked dated like the sweater. One source said they were told it was a reference to an ugly boardroom back at Blizzard's main office, which reportedly had similar patterns to the sweater. Another said they understood it to be a reference to an ugly hotel room during a different gaming conference. But in all pictures of the 2013 BlizzCon hotel room reviewed by Kotaku, the walls were largely white and blank and the decor was nondescript. The rug visible in some of the photographs does have a pattern, but it looks nothing like the sweaters in the framed picture everyone is holding. And here you have Kotaku editorializing essentially and saying that they don't believe some of these arguments, but I don't think that they're actually responsive to what the arguments are, which is references to a hotel room that wouldn't be pictured in the 2013 framework. And this isn't Kotaku's fault necessarily. Everyone that sees that picture and headline has the same visceral reaction. I certainly did. That's Activision Blizzard's problem. The devil is in those details because when you put it in a complaint like this, it can be easily shown to be one person doing something in a whisper campaign. When you've got a picture of people holding up that photo, you've got problems regardless of what the reality of the situation is. Another ex-Blizzard source pushed back on claims the Cosby suite was a joke about ugly boardrooms or sweaters, noting that when Blizzard moved to its new campus in 2008, the office had been freshly painted and to their knowledge, there was no infamous ugly boardroom. So this response to Kotaku appears to be, there are no ugly boardrooms, unclear whether that's useful. Moreover, regardless of the source of the joke, many of the captions and comments posted on the 2013 Cosby suite album are sexual in nature. Yes, definitely. That particular group of Cosby Suite people, uh, Blizzard developers, uh, certainly has a sexual connotation to the discussion. According to the images procured by Kotaku and two sources with knowledge of Afra Siabi's alleged predatory behavior, Cosby's reputation was apparently the point of why the group of men gathered around his picture in the photos. Uh, And this is two separate sources telling Kotaku that they are saying this group is doing this with this photo because of his allegations of being a rapist as of 2013, which may or may not be the case because 2014 appears to be the time when it came to the social zeitgeist. Then you get the fact that Activision Blizzard responded in some capacity to these complaints. Afra Siabi mysteriously left the company sometime last year without an official announcement by Activision Blizzard. An Activision Blizzard spokesperson tells Kotaku that an employee brought these 2013 events to our attention In June 2020, we immediately conducted our own investigation and took corrective action. At the time of the report, 
in June of 2020, presumably, we had already conducted a separate investigation and terminated him for his misconduct and his treatment of other employees. Now, there's a few things going on even here that you can see in one of eight different ways, if you are so inclined. One is that Activision Blizzard was made aware of this. They had they responded to it. They took corrective action. And they, in fact, had already investigated this individual and taken corrective action before that point in time. But not too far before that point in time, as Kotaku says, because he only left in 2020 in the first instance. On the other hand, remember that California's complaint here includes a reference to the fact that the president of Blizzard had had multiple conversations with Afra Siabi about drinking and being too friendly. And so it strains credibility to some extent to suggest that if they had had multiple conversations, if they knew this individual was a kind of nexus point for these kinds of problems, it seems unlikely that they wouldn't know what this individual was doing at a conference that they themselves put up and hosted. BlizzCon is run by Blizzard. So you've got a situation where maybe they're referencing Cosby for his nefarious history. Maybe they aren't. Maybe they took action against him in a proper context. Maybe they didn't. And even if they took action in 2020, it's important to note that that's after they would have been exchanging emails and conferences and data with the state of California who began their investigation in 2018. So you get a little bit less credit for saying you aren't a systematic discriminator or harasser as a company when you're doing these kinds of things in the shadow of pending mediations and a state investigation and what we now know to be a state lawsuit. So you've got 14 different factors that you can analyze when discussing this kind of thing. And I don't blame anybody for putting their own weight on anything. Yes, they, they love Bill Cosby because he's a rapist. No, they don't. It's just a weird photo they found. And you see these kinds of things in the people coming out now after the Kotaku article. Here we have Greg Street, somebody that's in the photo, says the suite was a green room at BlizzCon that many of us at the time used to take a break and relax during the convention. Anyone who has been to BlizzCon knows that there is drinking, but I can genuinely say that I never saw or experienced any of the harassment described in the allegations. And if I had, I absolutely would have stepped in. Looking back, I'm embarrassed at the nickname of that room, given all that we know now. At the time in 2013, it was nothing more to me than a silly reference to an old flea market portrait. I wasn't even aware of Cosby's reputation until after I left Blizzard and the allegations became more well known. And I certainly would not have tweeted about the suite if I thought it was something terrible at the time. People found after this Kotaku came out that there was a tweet, I believe, by Greg Street that said something along the lines of the the Cosby suite must always and forever be, or something along those lines that reminded me of uh, Bioshock Infinite. It might have been a reference to uh, The Lighthouse. There must always be a, a Cosby suite, I think is what he said. And so he said, I would never have tweeted it out if I thought it was something evil. I put it out in public. And, and that also is suggestive of a certain veracity, a certain truthfulness. However, if you're already inclined to say you have no confidence in the people operating at Activision Blizzard, as we talked about yesterday, you'd say, hey, they were so beyond consequence that they were just putting things out on Twitter. They were putting things out on Facebook. And I don't blame you for seeing things either way. Certainly, there's a legitimate way to see them in the most nefarious light. And that's what causes Activision Blizzard problems. Similarly, you had a Medium post done by Joshua Mosquera, who is also pictured in that photo. And he says, I'm not defending these images, but I do want to offer context as I attended the party at the Cosby Suite. There must have been close to 100 people at the party, Blizzard employees and also their spouses, friends, and even family. Back then in 2013, the suite was named after Cosby because of the hideous carpet that reminded us of his sweaters and not, as we would all find out a year later, the allegations leveled against the actor that once played Dr. Huxtable. And again, it's November 2013. Wikipedia, others reference the fact that 2014 appears to be when this really turned against Bill Cosby. At that point in time, he had been working on Netflix and NBC shows. So there is at least a plausible world in which what these folks are saying is true. You also note that they give different reasons, just as Kotaku mentioned. That's possibly because it's essentially a kind of urban legend type room and they found a flea market photo that could have given rise to the name or they found it afterwards, could have related to some room somewhere. Very difficult to kind of trace these things back or could be because he's an alleged rapist and they knew it from 2005 and 2006 and someone there, maybe Afra Siabi, maybe someone else, wanted to use that reputation. Very, very unclear. Certainly in 2021, 
the image of Bill Cosby is different than it might have been certainly before 2013 and, and maybe even before 2006. That picture disgusts me now. This comment continues. Looking at it feels like a punch in the stomach. I can only imagine what it feels like for others. That is no longer Dr. Huxtable and his trademark sweaters on that poster, but a rapist. The following year, the theme was changed to a dinosaur, but the sadness of the previous year lingered in all of us. No, this is actually an admission that there is some kind of suite that presumably operated in a similar way. The Cosby suite name itself maybe isn't the biggest problem for Activision Blizzard, but this is the kind of thing when you have a lot of people talking to the press, a lot of people trying to defend themselves, say that if you're trying to defend Activision Blizzard, you're looking at it from a legal perspective. You say, oh, okay. So they're admitting there was another suite. Was was that suite plied with alcohol? Was there a Facebook group about that suite? This is what discovery looks like, folks. I feel confident that none of the dozens of men and women in those photos knowingly held up a picture of a monster for a photo op, beers in hands, silly smiles on their faces. I am not denying there were problems. Was it professional to have a giant sweet party with alcohol where fans mixed with devs and family? Definitely not. Some of the pictures in the series have women holding up the poster, but a lot of them do not. Too many of them do not. Now, this again is suggestive of an individual speaking. It's not a vetted statement. That's a very weird thing to say when the substance of the article is about the fact that Bill Cosby is a convicted slash overturned convicted rapist, and you're holding it up suggestive of a certain culture regarding the worth and value of women at your company. And your statement is that not enough women were holding up the picture. I know what he's getting at. I think you know what he's getting at too, that you want to be more inclusive. I probably wouldn't recommend pushing for that inclusivity with respect to photos where you're holding up Bill Cosby's photo. But that's what you get when you have all these people defending themselves and going out to the public, etc. It's very weird statements and problems from the corporate side, just from a legal perspective. And the reason I'm making this video, the devil in the details, is to talk about how you get to a settlement, why you settle. Even if you want to sit here and say Activision Blizzard is getting railroaded a little bit and some of these things are overblown and there might be one bad actor that's doing all these things and the Facebook group doesn't actually show harassment as much as it shows guys ready to party. Even if you want to say all those things, it's worth understanding what the public relations and even legal impact of Kotaku in less than a week going out and finding this kind of thing and what's going to be found next. What's next down the line? In this Twitter thread, I continued by saying, even if from a legal perspective, you could conceivably still put everything on a single bad actor and his negative influences, they, Activision Blizzard, have to know there's more to find here that will continue to drag their name through the mud. In addition to this, there were some other things that were investigated yesterday and additionally found out that also kind of point to this detail work that's going to continue as long as this continues to be a story. One of the things I mentioned yesterday when talking about CEO Bobby Kotick's response to the planned walkout, to the terrible messaging that Activision had done, is that they were doing certain things to try to assuage the employees and their walkout and to answer some of the demands and requests that were being made to them. One of the things they did was as follows. As Bobby Kotick writes, I have asked the law firm Wilmer Hale to conduct a review of our policies and procedures to ensure that we have and maintain best practices to promote a respectful and inclusive workplace. This work will begin immediately. And the Wilmer Hale team will be led by Stephanie Avakian, who is related to the Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC. And I said a couple of things here. One of them was, I don't know why the SEC is terribly useful to the employees, but this was an employee slash investor letter. That's why it was released in a press release. The other thing that I mentioned was, okay, if you're on the employee side, if this were a negotiation, one of the things that you would look at is you say, okay, you've hired a third party to do X, Y, or Z. One of the very first things I want to make sure of is that that third party doesn't have an existing relationship with you. That, okay, you're going to hire them. You're going to pay them. There's always going to be a certain kind of client relationship, but I want to make sure that you aren't responsible for some other revenue stream for them, that they aren't your client, that they aren't your executive's client, that they aren't related to you in some fashion. I said, that's what I would be looking at if I was on the employee side. Well, lo and behold, not too long after that went out, we get articles like the following. Law firm reviewing Activision Blizzard policies connected to executive VP, and they tie them to Fran Townsend and references to Wilmer Hale in general. I actually find more useful a reference that they make to the fact that there is proof that Wilmer Hale is currently representing Activision Blizzard. You have here from January 19th, 2021, Wilmer Hale uh, typeface here. We are writing on behalf of our client, Activision Blizzard Inc., some SEC 
uh, type stuff, inclusion of uh, exclusion of shareholder proposals for their proxies. They work on their securities documents at bare minimum. And so what you've got here is you've got Bobby Kotick and Activision Blizzard asking their law firm to bless the documents that they have and to make any changes that are necessary, which is what they are already doing. That's what law firms do. That's what clients do is they ask people to look at their their guidebooks, their policies, their procedures. That's something that I do. Uh, And so this is essentially just them asking their firm to go and look at this a little bit more fulsomely. And if you're an employee, I don't blame you at all for saying, no, 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 that's not good enough. We can agree on a firm that has no prior ties to Activision Blizzard. And yes, you'll be paying their bills and that always presents a certain amount of issue. But as long as they aren't getting revenue from another source, you know, if Wilmer Hale comes out strongly against Activision Blizzard and their policies and demands changes and finds problems, you can say, well, they're risking their revenue source from the securities work that they do for Activision Blizzard. That's a natural conflict of interest, not one that necessarily rises to a legal ethical issue. I'm not accusing Wilmer Hale of doing that kind of thing because there are ways to to organize that in your firm. And I'm sure that they've gone through that proper process. But from an employee standpoint, there's a natural conflict there. Activision Blizzard pays these people money to do other things for them. They're going to be less inclined to rule terribly harshly on the current status of what Activision Blizzard has in place and to demand changes and to otherwise come out publicly or do anything else like that. Now, lawyers are already kind of bound by attorney-client privilege. They are the client, Activision Blizzard is, so you're not going to get that kind of public redress that you want in any event. But when these articles come out, when this relationship is shown, this takes on a much more diminished kind of capacity to assuage employee fears. So in my opinion, this does very little. You'd want a third party. Maybe the employees can get one. They hire a different law firm. God knows there's enough of them. But As it stands right now, this is Activision asking their own law firm to do a review of their own stuff, and that's not going to get you very far. So as this story continues, you're going to get more Kotaku articles with people holding Cosby photos, regardless of whether the most negative implication of a photo like this is accurate or not. It looks accurate to the body politic, to to the world at large, and that's very bad. You're going to get more kind of foot faults about, hey, we're going to hire somebody to take care of this. Oh, as it turns out, they're connected to our VP that you hate. That's one of the reasons you're walking out. Oh, and they're also already our counsel and representing us in a completely different capacity. You're going to get more of those stories. Activision Blizzard is now in a position where those devil details are potentially going to break them down. They're losing the public relations battle. They lost it last week with their messages. Bobby Kotick restored it a little bit with a more considered answer here. And certainly investors were listening a little bit more fulsomely as we talked about yesterday, but they're going to continue to be these things. And so it wouldn't surprise me, as I said in the very first video of this series, if you see a settlement because this entire process, even if you're sitting in Activision Blizzard's C-level suite and think that you're in the right, that you've got policies and procedures, that these are one-off incidents, that you fired the guy as soon as you found out about it in 2020, there's going to be questions about whether you should have found out about it, how you could miss these things like photos, whether or not you're hiring people that already are on your side that are going to cause you problems. The state of California knows that. Kotaku knows that. You and I know that. And so Activision Blizzard is going to have to carefully evaluate how far it wants to press these things, what it's willing to give. We talked about the issue with the discrimination complaint. They might fight against that particularly hard, but Activision Blizzard is going to have to do some soul searching and we're certainly going to be there as they do. This has been Virtual Legality for today. If you enjoy talks of business, law, technology, video games, please consider supporting the channel. Every single little bit helps. We've got a Patreon. We've got other ways to support the channel, all shown in the description to this video. Or if you just subscribe, you upvote, you downvote. Hey, if you hate this, downvote. Leave a comment why you disagree with something that I said. I've got some great comments talking about my tone, talking about other things that I've said where people think I'm being too mean to Activision or not mean enough to Activision or not listening to people and the complaints or the demands enough. I appreciate every single bit of it. I read almost all the comments. I can't claim that I read them all because we're getting a lot more uh, now, but I certainly try to. Please leave a comment. Do everything else that you can. Every single little bit helps to have these conversations in virtual reality that are hopefully informational, educational, uh, and entertaining most weeks. I don't know how entertained you can be uh, by this story, but if you caught this on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. And if you listen to it as a podcast, thank you so much for listening. And I will catch you on the very next episode of Virtual Legality. Virtual Legality is a YouTube video series with audio podcast versions presented as commentary and for education and entertainment purposes only. It does not constitute legal advice and does not create an attorney-client relationship. If you have legal questions about the topics discussed, please consult your own legal counsel.